This week on TGC News, Freedom Machines, Freedom Tubes, and Freedom Delivery Systems. Tack Pack is an enthusiast subscription service that is focused on bringing you the stuff you need straight to your door on a monthly basis. Every month is different, and you can be met with gun parts, accessories, cleaning gear, or even some bigger and cooler shenanigans. And because you're watching TGC, if you use the code TGC knife, you'll get a free ABKT knife. And if you use the code TGC break, you will get a free muzzle break only when you punch them in over at tackpack.com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton and I'm still sick. Let's jump right into it. First up this week, Kimber has released their annual sort of big push of new products for 2020. 2020. Yep, it's that time of year again. It's all the stuff's coming out leading to SHOT Show and there's new stuff. And it seems that this year is less about new guns for Kimber and more about new color schemes. Let's roll through them real quick, shall we? First up, a new flavor of the Raptor in the Evo. Micro 9 and Stainless 2 line called the Collector Edition. The color scheme is sort of a black and tan thing, and it keeps a lot of the normal Raptor stylings, just different colors. There's also six new models, which appear to be the same two-tone with laser grips that Kimber has been doing for years, but some reason it's on their new product list. I don't really understand what I'm missing there. There's the new Micro 9 Triari, weird name, which I actually think looks fantastic. That sort of geometric pattern on the slide and grip in the all black color scheme. There's the Micro 9 Amethyst for people that make bad decisions. They've also expanded their double single action wheel gun line with a two inch, four inch target, four inch combat and Texas edition, because that's a thing people are doing now. I've been hearing more and more good stuff about the K6S over time. So it's cool to see them growing that lineup. There are also a couple more Yawnfest Evo variants, and the one that made me bother with going down this road at all, the Kimber Rapide. To my knowledge, this is the first time Kimber has made a gun like this with the holes in the slide and the sort of more racy feel to it. At the end of the day, it's still a $1,500 1911, so you have to consider whether you want that or not. In reality, it's all cosmetic changes for Kimber this year. I don't even think that Rapide is different internally in any way. I guess when I really think about it, Kimber's not a company that I include in my thoughts when I think about innovation and that's a shame for them. What do you guys think? How about this? How many of you guys actually own a 1911? Sound off in the comments and let's talk about it. Next up this week is a machine designed to create freedom. Some of you may remember a company called Defense Distributed and their home CNC machine called the Ghost Gunner. The most basic idea is that it's a desktop CNC that allows you to complete 80% style receivers. Well, now they've released a new version called the Ghost Gunner 3. I'll run through some of the updates for you guys. There's a whole list of them because I think it's really sort of coming into its own. The cutting is five times faster. It has twice the build space, meaning you can work on larger items. It has automatic X table leveling. The inside is now lit with LEDs. There's carry handles on the outside so you can move it easier. And there's also a bunch of technical improvements like a temperature control fan, better spindle rigidity and run out. That means it's going to be more consistent in machining, a better chip guard to keep things from getting into spaces where they shouldn't be, and a few other improvements on top of that. All in all, there is nothing Nothing else quite like this for the home builder. It ships with the coating to finish out AR-15s, AR-10s, they call them AR-308s, 1911s, and Polymer 80 frames. And according to them, there is an update coming in 2020 that will allow you to complete an AK receiver. Now, the hard part, the final price of the Ghost Gunner 3 is 2,100 bucks. I know that a lot of you guys are struggling with that number because it's, it's just not cheap. It's not cheap. However, like I said earlier, there really isn't anything like this, and to have this sort of freedom available to you through a machine like this could be priceless to some, myself included. That's freaking awesome. 
You know, one of the most common things I've been asked over the years when it comes to silencers is which one is the best for doing sort of a little bit of everything? Which one can I buy and put on all of my guns? The idea of a do-all can is a wonderful thing to think of, but in reality, a large number of the attempts of that concept have fallen short. Either not suppressing smaller calibers right, not suppressing well at all in general, uh, maybe the bore's too big for the small calibers, or it just sucks in general, or the price is absurd, or somewhere in between. There are a couple decent ones out there, but in large part, they've all generally been just a flop. Well, Silencer Co. is taking another stab at it. They've done it before. This is a new stab at it with their new Omega 36M. And I'll tell you what. The specs make it look pretty damn enticing. It's rated up to 338 Lapua, but will also handle a simple 9mm. It works as a rifle and a pistol can. It's modular, which means you can add a section to the end to get more space inside the can, more total volume to tackle more gases. You'll have three different mounting options like three lug, direct thread, and of course their ASR mount. It's also full auto rated. And unlike some of the do all cans of yore, bye bye boys, have fun storming the castle. They are claiming some really solid decibel ratings across the board. This thing checks a lot of boxes. However, with an MSRP of $1,187, it better check almost all of them. I'm excited, but skeptical about this one. We shall see if we can get some time with one to see if those claims hold up in the not so distant future. You know guys, I've been thinking about getting a hybrid lately. No, not the kind of hybrid you're thinking. The handmade in the USA kind of hybrid with leather and Kydex. The kind that is available for just about every popular handgun on the planet. The kind that's comfortable when you put it on and comfortable all day, even if you're a big guy. I might need a belt to go with it too. Crossbreed holsters will definitely check those boxes. And if you use the code TGC15 over at crossbreedholsters.com, you'll get a whopping 15% off your entire order. Let's keep things rolling this week with some rapid fire. First up, SB Tactical has released yet another new brace, this time for the Remington TAC-13. I had no idea people actually bought the TAC-13, but sure, cool. It will come with a pistol grip adapter and either an SBA3 or A4 on the tube. Ed Brown has realized that it's time to step up and now they have a new line of guns called the Fueled Series. The basic premise is that they're getting into polymer striker fired gun modifications and they're launching with M&Ps off the bat and have three different packages, seemingly only different in appearance. It's a complete overhaul of the gun and the cost is what you might expect. They start at two grand and go up from there, depending on the choice of optic that you want mounted to the slide. Either way, these are cool guns and I'm excited to see more options in that space. And Matador Arms, a company we featured not long ago for their interesting muzzle brakes and P320 mag adapters for ARs, has expanded the Mag X adapter line to include MPs and CZ75 mags. It sounds like they're trying to answer the call about, what about an adapter for, insert company here, magazines? Prices on those start at 120 bucks. It's time now for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from all over the interwebs. This time, our questions are coming from our incredible supporters over at Subscribestar. If you enjoy the show every week, you should check that out. First up, James Chapman says, were you disappointed by the size of the crowd at the 2A rally in DC? Do you feel that there was a lack of support by gun companies and retailers? I wasn't disappointed. I mean, the organization of that event was very last minute. And I think with that in mind, there was a decent turnout. Would I have liked to have seen more people and more brands behind it? Absolutely. There were some brands. I know the guys from Brownells were there. There was a bunch of influencer types. And there's probably a lot of brands that I'm forgetting right now. So I apologize for that. But more is always better. Oh, so Grande says now that the Supreme Court has sided against Remington in the Sandy Hook case, do you think this will snowball across the gun industry? Yes, that decision is a huge problem. This friendly fire segment doesn't have enough time for me to dive into the implications, but 
That decision is a bad thing for the gun industry. Larry Thompson says, when, if ever, are we going to be able to go back to being a community of shooters and not always have to be 2A advocates first? Well, the answer is never. Really, like, like, just never. Get that crap out of your head. But I hear your frustration. I understand. It sucks that we're constantly having to fight. Feeling like you're always fighting is mentally exhausting. And at the same time, just going out and being a shooter is part of being an advocate for the second. It doesn't always have to be rallies and rah-rah this and go tell your politicians. It doesn't have to be that all the time. Take someone new to the range. Spread the gospel by being a shooter. Everyone is at their best when they're mentally rested and not exhausted. So take a second, step back if you can, and then jump back in the fight. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. Who are the best newcomers in the gun content creator space right now? I need some fresh content in my feed. I'm like, this is totally selfish. And I want to know who you guys are watching and following right now. Everybody, of course, knows IV-88, Hickok, Mac, etc. You know, guns and gear. Everybody knows all those guys. Who's the new guys that you're watching? Tag them in the comments below. And if you want to ask your friendly fire question, send that to me on theguncollective.com. And that is it for this week's show, guys. If you disliked it, hit that button. If you liked it, hit like, hit subscribe, and consider supporting us via the links in the video description below. I would really genuinely appreciate your support. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.